liquid gold. All right, where the home bar beckons as the world reckons, this is a special Christmas in July slash whiskey in July edition of Liquid Gold right here on the We Own This Town podcast network, weownthistown.net. My name is Mike Wolf, your host today, along with my co-host, Mr. Kenneth Dedman. We'll be checking in with him in just a short while for Booze News. He's got a big Booze News report today, kind of a whiskey-centric episode today. Booze News is whiskey, and our guest for today, Mr. Robert Longhurst, the creative director and one of the founders of Red Eye Rye, a coffee liqueur slash rye whiskey concoction. Just in a class by itself, it's equal parts Amaro, after dinner drink, cocktail ingredient, workhorse, and maybe Christmas morning, since it's Christmas in July, Christmas morning coffee additive. But Robert Longhurst, the creative director, at Standard Proof Whiskey, that's standardproofwhiskey.com. We've got an interview with him today. They were just set to open their new tasting room in downtown Nashville, so we're going to talk all about that. They were hoping to open late June, early July, and everything intervened as it is tending to do these days. The world spinning out of control, leadership, it's, it's nowhere to be found. In terms of the leadership to steer this country, and this industry, through this wild pandemic that is affecting the entire world, it's just bizarre. Nashville recently rolling back to phase two, a modified phase two, they're calling it, but all bars have closed. Some of the bars downtown are open serving food, and it has been a tough time for the bars here in Nashville and beyond. I know Houston is set to go into another lockdown. Arizona talking about it even Los Angeles and parts of California, Florida. So this thing is going nowhere. All we can pledge to you here at Liquid Gold is we are just going to continue on with doing what we can to help you through this and provide you with some content. Robert from Standard Proof and the founder of Red Eye Rye. So the cool thing about this is their slogan, Born Behind the Bar, is really more than a slogan. It's actually true. How about that? It's just super cool to know the story. So Robert and I worked together for years, but uh, to know that he developed this as an after-dinner drink and an after-dinner sipper, similar to an Amaro, um, that he developed at Josephine Restaurant here in Nashville. It's just a really cool story. So we're going to talk about a really cool product that really was born behind the bar. So we look forward to that today, as well as Kenneth Deadman's Booze News. A couple programming notes We've got some cool stuff coming up here. We're going to do Agave Month in August and talk about why is tequila unfair? Well, we're going to go over all that. And for you agave fans out there, Mexican spirit fans in general, we've got some cool Mezcal Old Fashioned talk on the way here with Robert because it was a drink that he became known for at the Holland House back about 10 years ago or so when Mezcal Old Fashioned was not really a drink that people were ordering or drinking, but Robert really helped uh, along with you know plenty of other cocktailian folks around the country but robert had a real affinity for the mezcal old fashioned so we're going to go over his recipe for that and some of the some of the tricks of the trade with that one today but yeah we've got agave month coming in august we're going to talk tequila mezcal as well as a lot of the interesting cousins bacanora racia some of these cousins of these beautiful spirits of mexico And then September, we're going to be talking cider. And then we're gearing up to one of our favorite topics, whiskey, that we'll be heading into for the fall, talking about whiskey. We have secrets to spill. That is our topic for fall. It's going to be dark. It could be dark out there, folks. Let's be honest. Now, what we want to prepare you for is to make your own orange bitters so we're gonna eventually we're gonna get into that on the show you're gonna need orange bitters around the house this fall and winter for all these drinks that you're gonna make because a lot of the orange bitters that are out there regan's it's great hey there's good ones out there they're decent but making your own at home you could make a few jars of it and it would last you the whole fall and winter so that is what we're gonna get into eventually as we get into fall and we get out of summer but plenty of content to come here this summertime for liquid gold we've got the summer of shots next week we've got a double dose a double shot next week for shots we're going to be covering the kamikaze 
the original shot, as well as the Ricky, not necessarily a shot, but an amazing drink that is improbably comprised of gin and lime. Kenneth and I have joked about it, and there's a great Tony Soprano quote, but it's kind of a joke of a drink. It's like, gin and lime juice, I'm a genius, but really cool history, and it is liquid air conditioning. It's the drink of the month in Washington, D.C., so maybe we'll poke some fun at those leadershipless motherfuckers up there in Washington, D.C., for they can drink their Rickies and just keep their fucking thumbs up their asses while this pandemic rages and they can't keep our fucking kids safe they can't keep our schools safe they can't keep anything straight so they can just drink a ricky and i'm sure it'll be okay however it's not all doom and gloom there's some beautiful people making amazing spirits here in nashville and beyond and as promised we've got an interview with robert longhurst of red eye rye and standard proof whiskey coming up next right here on liquid gold we've got to throw a shout out to walker jewelry handmade silver and gold jewelry right here in nashville tennessee you can find her shop at 105 24th street in old hickory tennessee also online at www.walkerjewelry.com also on instagram at walker jewelry that's at walker jewelry and she's been doing some uh, rentable stacker ring kits They are available to purchase online as well as they have recently added a bridal section to the online store. They are building up inventory of the Unica in stock special occasion and engagement pieces. Check that out at walkerjewelry.com. Our friend Lindsay Walker does amazing stuff, even bolo ties, necklaces, what have you. Check them out. Super unique pieces at walkerjewelry.com. All right, well, as promised here on the line, calling to the the home studio here in Inglewood from uh, Creve Hall, just uh, a little bit south of downtown Nashville, where he's been working on a very special project. He is the creative director and co-founder of Standard Proof Whiskey, and uh, which originated with Red Eye Rye, a coffee rye infusion, beautiful liqueur spirit that we're going to talk all about. Robert Longhurst on the program. How are you, sir? Great, man. How about yourself? Doing pretty well. You know, as we as we talked a little bit off mic, it's like uh, waking up to uh, maybe what might be a dream, but it it appears it is not a dream. <laughs> it's not. It's not. Yeah. Myself daily and, and not in a good way. Yeah, it's good to just talk to uh, talk to old friends sometimes, just to know that we're all kind of going through it together. That's that's for sure, man. I think that's might be the only thing that keeps us sane at this point and you have such a unique perspective because you not only did you kind of found this thing you got this thing off the ground as it says um in one of the slogans born behind the bar and we've got history together working behind the bar back at holland house so we'll get into that a little bit but you've got such a unique perspective for this whole thing because the company was growing you're growing the brand you're growing into different expressions of the these rye whiskeys and liqueurs that are that are infused with real ingredients, and um, but you were about to open in a new tasting room and uh, event space downtown. The new space is at two nineteen Fifth Avenue North, right there adjacent to Woolworths downtown, uh, right near Puckett's Grocery, around the corner from the Hermitage Hotel and the Capitol Grill. It's a good place to hang out and eat and drink down there. Um, so. Tell me a little bit about what that's been like through a pandemic, and I know that you are skilled at uh, welding and building things, so have you been down there just just building this space from scratch through this whole thing? Yeah, man, that's that's honestly uh, been what the past three months of my life have looked like for sure, just kind of in the space, building different stuff from the shelves to the, to the bar. And just kind of making sure details are, are done down there. I've, I've had a lot of help and things are starting to look good. But yeah, I mean, it's just kind of been a challenge as, as it has been for, for everybody. You know, the, the past three months have been unique and, you know, we're, we're a new brand. We're, I think, uh, just over two years old and still relatively small, although we're in about 14 states now and sold nationwide online. Being a small brand in, in a in a pandemic, it's it's definitely a challenge. We, we continue to grow month to month, but 
you know, opening up a tasting room where a large part of the service down there is going to be the bar. Things have been kind of delayed back and forth, and um, things are still kind of in limbo and up in the air. So we'll, we'll just kind of see how that, that stuff plays out in order for us to be able to open safely and, and serve everybody. So Yeah, so it's a tasting room there, and you've got, uh, at this point, you've got six products to taste through. Um, five relatively new ones along with the flagship, the Red Eye Rye, your kind of after dinner coffee flavored, uh, expression, which is awesome. We'll talk about how that came to be and everything, but in addition to a tasting room, it's also going to be events and a bar and yeah. What do you see as far as what you're going to be doing down there downtown? Yeah. So we're going to be doing all the bottling. Uh, and some of the infusing and stuff down there. It's going to be a really visual experience. We're going to have all the fresh ingredients down there and actually infusing it into the whiskey. We're going to be doing cocktail classes, and people can kind of come in there and see. You know, it's, it's, it's a small operation, but we're going to be bottling all the stuff there and, and have some barrels down there. We'll have, you know, tasting room only limited edition stuff um, right when we open. So, you know, we have six products on the market right now but i think when the doors open we'll probably have at least one maybe two limited edition products that'll be sort of a surprise down there when we open for sure so oh that's cool that's good to know yeah definitely yeah so going back to where we kind of met and where um i don't know where it was i don't quite remember in your there was a lot of long nights there but uh, i don't remember where it was in your in your bartending career but uh, we intersected and we worked together. We worked in that back bar on some of those busy weekend nights where we would have like four bartenders working uh, back at the Holland House here in East Nashville, old cocktail institution. But um, yeah, what what do you remember about those days in terms of uh, there was a lot happening in terms of the, the, the world of the cocktail and things were accelerating. Guests were expecting certain things, and people were getting way more into cocktails. It was kind of an exciting time. But what do you remember about that time, about being behind the bar and being creative and all that? Man, so honestly, that was probably one of my first proper cocktail gigs. I think it was maybe like my second gig where there was like a lot of learning involved, and, and it definitely like took took the level of bartending I was doing to another level there and it was a great learning experience I learned a lot and definitely like the volume was was fun and combining those two elements of like craft cocktails and volume as as you know was interesting at times and yeah it was fun I, I feel like you know it's it's hard to pin down uh one thing but I definitely think just like the experimentation that we were doing and like you know that back bar was definitely the the place where you know, during downtime, we'd, we'd mess around with some different ideas and cocktails. And you had that, that famous cigar cocktail. I forgot what you called it. Oh, yeah, the Cuban cigar cocktail. The yeah, um, Habana was, Vieja. There it was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man, that, that, that was, was a good fun. one. And, you yeah. know, between that kind of thing and taking uh, taking little shots of mezcal out of jalapenos, I think that was maybe. <laughs> oh, that's right. I forgot about the mezcal out of jalapenos. Yeah, yeah. Oh. All right. And you also were known for, because this is something like on a random Monday night, I'd be working with Jeremiah or somebody, and people would come in and be like, well, Robert makes me this Mezcal Old Fashioned. Can you make a Mezcal Old Fashioned? So you became known as the guy who was like getting Nashville to drink all these Mezcal Old Fashions, which at the time was kind of, uh, it was a, it was a new thing. Just even getting people to drink Mezcal at all, and then just, I think because of you, we all were making these Mezcal old fashions. So, I'm going to put you on the spot. So, for everybody at home who maybe has a piece of citrus, something sweet, and some Mezcal lying around, let's hear it from from you, the master of the Mezcal old fashion. Let's hear a recipe. So, uh, I think the, the key, and you hit the nail on the head with the, with the citrus there, I think the key of what I was doing maybe was the was the grapefruit peel kind of lightly muddled in the in the bottom of the glass, you know, just to get the get the oils out. There it is. Um, b- before you stir the the mezcal, so I, I'd lightly muddle that that grapefruit peel, get the oils out with the with the sugar, and add about two ounces of, of a nice mezcal uh, with some Angostura bitters, 
mm-hmm. and uh, a little bit of the agave nectar, I think, is what we were using for sugar, and then stir it up, and then strain it onto some fresh ice, and garnish it with another uh, fresh grapefruit peel. But I think it was the grapefruit peel, man. I know. That's awesome. Really, like, I don't know if I can take full credit for the whole mezcal old fashioned thing, uh, but. That's how I remember making it, and I, I definitely, I'm a fan of that drink, for sure. Yeah, it became your kind of signature, I think, because it was always like, yeah. you'd get four people sitting down at the bar, and they'd be like, take a mezcal old fashion. It's like, you're Robert's friends, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> um, so well, man, I feel like most everybody was drinking whiskey back then. Yeah. Just, or mezcal is such like an easy transfer over from, from whiskey. So. Yeah, and it was either, it was either whiskey or... It was either uh, black lemon old fashions, or it was um, some of the bartenders and service industry people would just do fernet or chartreuse, and then there was occasionally the chartreuse squirt gun, where Jeremiah had come around and squirt uh, green chartreuse in your mouth from a sh- from a squirt gun. I do remember that towards towards the the end of my tenure there for sure. So that's something we're not going to see probably ever again. <laughs> Just squirting. <laughs> yeah. Given the times, probably not. Man. Right. That, that will be best for sure. Look back on that with fond memories. Oh, man. That's amazing. So from Holland House, you go over to Josephine. You kind of start taking over the bar there and the bar program at Josephine eventually. Um, you kind of work your way up to, to taking over the bar there. And that leads you to developing this this spirit liqueur slash bartender's handshake, which if our listeners don't know the bartender's handshake, that's essentially like a bottle of uh, Amaro or Fernet or whiskey or something you've got behind the bar that is like a greeting for your fellow bartender or it's a goodbye to one of your favorite guests. But it's essentially like you and I are going to do a short little shot as a ritual and uh, you develop this red eye rye formula using coffee, using rye whiskey, and your other proprietary ingredients. I don't know what you want to share here, but uh, tell me about how you developed that and why that came to be such a thing that led to this whole company and now a new space downtown, all these things. Yeah, man. So honestly, like with exactly what you were saying, I I was kind of fascinated with that whole bartender's handshake thing and and the whole culture behind that. It was was just something I found really cool and I loved tomorrow and, and I was, Honestly, the, the concept started off as, as like me almost trying to create my own version of, of something like an Amaro. So I was taking uh, like a rye whiskey base and infusing that with different ingredients like honey and coffee. And, you know, I put some like black walnut bitters or something in there to create this kind of semi-sweet but spirit forward like after dinner sipper almost um and i'd keep that sort of in an unmarked bottle behind the bar and it would do exactly that with it it was just something that like my when my friends came in i'd give them little little nips of it or or you know samples to guest after dinner that kind of thing so that's how it started um and at the same time i was doing consulting on the, on the side for a, a business called barsmith and and they uh they do non-alcoholic mixers uh, they've got like a margarita mix, old fashioned mix, and and that's our our sister company essentially. So I partnered with those guys, and and we brought it to market. Um, and we've got a great team behind us, and they helped me develop the the whole thing. And we've launched, uh, as we talked about, five five new products behind it. So pretty amazing, pretty amazing story. I know it took a lot of work too from that from those initial experimental sessions to to yeah. bringing that product to market. Can you tell us a little bit about maybe some of the challenges along the way or like what that process was like for you taking like a, just a fun experimental idea that you're using behind the bar and then all of a sudden, you know, after a, a lot of hard work, you're in 14 states. And like we talked about last fall, I mean, you were like, yeah, I just went to Atlanta. We launched in Atlanta. I've just had a party in Austin. It sounds like a, a, a good time, but uh, I know it took a lot of work to get there. So tell us about some of the challenges and tribulations. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a, a lot of work is an understatement for sure. I mean, I, I feel like it was a labor of love and, and seeing the the first bottle come off the line with, with my business partners was just like a, a huge moment. And then, you know, honestly, 
the first time I sat at a bar in, a, in another city where I didn't even necessarily know anybody there or anything, and I saw the bottle behind the bar, it was just like, you know, one of those moments that hits you pretty hard, and it's it was pretty cool as a, as a bartender of of over a decade. That that moment was definitely pretty pretty awesome. You know, the main challenge is just you know time and and trying to spread yourself out as far as possible. And I wouldn't have been able to do any of it without the business partners I have and, and the guys with their expertise and on the distributor side of things and, and having the relationships that they have in Texas. And, uh, you know, we, we just had the right recipe for the, for the amount of success that we've had so far. And like you said, with the tasting room being a brand new thing, I feel like that's the next kind of link in the chain, so to speak. And, um, we can kind of make all these things work together and just kind of keep the growth going. Tell me about when you're at when you're at these different bars and you're out there promoting the product and stuff, and it's it's probably a lot of fun to just promote it as, hey, do a shot of this with me. Or you're probably at some yeah. of these bars and you're like, let's do a shot. Oh, yeah, I'm here with this stuff. Let's do a shot of this. But tell me a little bit about, because um, the new ones are so cocktail friendly and lend themselves to cocktails, but how do you see red eye and then also some of the new products do you see them as not only stuff to shoot but just really fun versatile cocktail ingredients yeah i mean all all the above i think like my first priority when kind of like developing the the products is i want them to be enjoyed by themselves i want them to be great standalone neat or over ice products um so that's kind of like priority number one um and then obviously having the cocktail background that both you and I do, I, I feel like I want people to be able to mix with them. And I feel like it, it kind of solves solves a problem for that home bartender that, you know, doesn't have the years of experience that we do, but knows the basic cocktails like Old Fashioned or Manhattan or Whiskey Sour. You know, they can add an ingredient like ours, like say the, the wildflower rice infused with honeysuckle, they can add that to a whiskey sour. And all of a sudden they have like this complex cocktail that feels like something that you and I would make in five steps and take 10 minutes to do. And sure. Know, all that good stuff. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the good old days. Was there ever a thought when you were, when you were bringing red eye rye to market and you're thinking about how I'm going to market this thing, did you ever think like this is an Amaro and maybe we'll market it as such? Or, or was it like maybe that's not the best way to market something, um, being that we're in Tennessee and you're going to be in southern states? But how, how did you look at it? Was it a red eye rye, like a rye whiskey liqueur the whole time? Or did you think of it in as Amaro? Did you struggle with that at all? No, I mean, so that, that, that's a great question. We, we did. Um, me having kind of the bar- the bartending background and, and liking kind of the obscure things like, you know, my mind was like, let's make this kind of a unique niche, like Amaro folk, like Southern Amaro type thing. Exactly. Like what you're saying. Yeah. But exactly like your train of thought, it was our whiskey drinkers in the South going to understand what we're doing there. And being a full 80 proof rye whiskey, you know, that's infused with the real coffee beans, is that really like an accurate description of it? Um, even though it, it has the same kind of characteristics and mouthfeel and all that. Um, mm-hmm. So we kind of decided against that and really like went heavy with the rye whiskey. And basically what we wanted to do was kind of bridge the gap of like your syrupy, you know, candy, uh, you know, fake flavor, you know, flavored whiskeys into like, making a product for like, your whiskey nerds and like the people who like, you know, will it rye and have the, you know, the little basement bars with all the obscure bottles and that kind of thing. So like making a product that's infused with real ingredients for your whiskey connoisseur and like home, home bartender. Yeah. I think that's a, I think it's a good call because then, you know, you're, you're going to different cities, you're going to promote your, your product, you're out of different bars and you know you don't have to like start with that conversation like this is my amaro and then people are like what's an amaro are you it's what yeah. wait it's italian and then so i think that was that was smart and i'm sure that that has really paid off for you guys so i think that's cool that that however that came to be um so with the new flavors you've got the ginger root you've got a ginger rye made with ginger root 
You've got the wildflower rye that you talked about, great for whiskey sours with honeysuckle. You've got the emerald rye with fresh mint. The golden rye, um, which is a pineapple rye, which is perfect for the summertime. We should talk about this pina colada that's on your oh, website. Yeah. That looks amazing. <laughs> and then the, uh, the pecan rye with Texas pecan. So th- that's exciting. You're you're getting all these different flavors out there. What have uh, what has surprised you most? What's what's been kind of one that you feel like has has stuck out that they maybe you didn't expect? So I, I would say honestly, the the pecan rye was something that I kn- I knew would be good, and it would you know it totally makes sense. Yeah. Um, but I didn't expect it necessarily to be as good as it is. It's definitely. It's one of my favorites, if not my favorite. I think Wildflower might might take it just by a little bit, but you know, I was just I was really happy with the ingredients that we're getting and the, and the rye whiskey base, and they just paired up perfectly. And it took a while to get the balance right, and for it not to be too sweet and still be whiskey forward, and and have those kind of natural like brown sugar notes that pair well with the pecan. And it just I'm really happy with the way it turned out. And I mean, just for you know, drinking on the rocks are neat. That's that is the perfect one for sure. It is so good. I'm a big fan of that one as well. Um, and then the the recipe that's on your website for the whiskey colada, which two ounces of the golden rye, the pineapple rye, two ounces of pineapple juice, and then one ounce cream of coconut. So you could do the Coco Lopez. You could uh, you can probably even if you're doing like grocery uh, to go, grocery delivery. You could probably get some cream of coconut, some Coco Lopez, pretty easily these days. I'd, I'd say so. So you could uh, throw some pineapples in your next order and some cream of coconut and then pick up some of the Golden Riot. Where can folks find it here in Nashville and beyond, um, retail-wise? So Frugal McDougal has it. Uh, I know Sinker is over there on the east side has it. Midtown One and Spirits. Uh, there's... Definitely lots of places in Nashville. Weiss Liquors on the east side has them. Yes. Look pretty well distributed in Nashville. Um, online, uh, actually on our website, there's a shop section, and you can get it delivered through various avenues, uh, through Drizzly, Instacart, Mini Bar, and I think uh, outside of Tennessee, so all, all 49 states outside of Tennessee, you can actually buy a bottle and have it shipped through our website as well. So, And it's free shipping on two or more bottles. Oh, that's amazing. That's good to know. So that's at standardproofwhiskey.com that you can check all that out. Info on the new tasting room, and you can even order some bottles to uh, come to your house. So are there are there some other flavors that you're that you're working with? I know you've got some stuff that you're going to debut in the tasting room, and you don't have to tell us about that quite yet. But uh, yeah, have you been? Is it just like constant experimentation with with your base and thinking about different flavors that might work together? Are you getting inspired by other cocktails that you're having? Or tell me about the development phase. So I'm sure you're thinking yeah, about so, that now. Oh, for sure, man. So uh, we'll. We'll be releasing a, a straight rye whiskey at the tasting room. Uh, that's one that we hope to have uh, day one opening. We're not 100% positive, but that'll be sort of a limited release. No, oh, that's um, amazing. So, most... so just a straight rye whiskey. Yeah. Just oh, a, beautiful. A straight, uh, yeah, straight rye whiskey. We're super excited about that. Uh, basically just kind of going through the final process of getting everything approved label-wise and all that stuff for that. Um and honestly, what I'm most excited about that I've had sitting in a barrel for, I think, a little over two years now is a uh, Red Eye Rye that's actually aged in uh, wine barrels from Arrington Vineyards. Oh, amazing. Um, so we have uh, one barrel of that uh, that's been aging for a little over two years, um, and we'll, we'll be bottling that and selling it at, at the tasting room. And I think we'll probably have between 30 and 50 cases, maybe tops of that. Uh, and that, that'll be a one-time only thing. I, I tried it a few weeks ago, and it is, it's is—it's incredible. I'm, I'm really excited for people to try it. Yeah, so how long did it sit in the, in the wine barrels? So it's a little over two years. Um, I think I put it in there uh, the beginning of July a couple of years ago. Um, I've got the date on the barrel. I can't remember it off the top of my head, but... Wow. Um, it's actually old Chamberson barrels from Arrington, and it's been sitting in there and just kind of 
marinating and it's it's almost turned into a, a port it, it tastes almost like a tawny port but it's 80 proof so it's, it's that's awesome something that's unique and oh wow great after dinner after dinner type thing for sure oh wow i can't wait to try that one like two years in a wine barrel that's that's gonna make that's gonna make a mark yeah so that's yeah, exciting it, it was totally experimental when we did it it was like one of those things we picked the barrel up and and put the red eye in expecting to let it sit for maybe like 30 days or 60 days and just see what happened and we tasted it after that time and it was like kind of subtle it wasn't anything that was you know if people tasted it next to the regular you know coffee red eye it wasn't going to be something that you know it just wasn't different enough so we just left it in there and honestly we forgot about it for probably a good year and I tasted it right around the year year and a half mark and it was just it, it had turned into this really cool, like I was saying, like a tawny port almost. So definitely excited to get that in bottles and and uh, and get it out there for sure. Well, that's super cool too because that's like a like your you know your your origin behind the bar and experimentation, and that's the kind of thing that would happen at a bar where you like I, I remember people at Husk finding things that I had made and put under the under the house up there. And they were like, "Hey, we found uh, we found some nochino that you left sitting here, and it's delicious." <laughs> and that's the kind of thing that would happen in a bar. So you would just forget about something in a barrel, and it's probably only going to make it better. So that's a pretty yeah, cool exactly, story. Man. Well, dude, thank you so much. Really appreciate you doing this and talking to us tonight. Happy to do it. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, I really, I really hope that the new space here, the new tasting room at two nineteen Fifth Avenue North in Nashville, right downtown there right there uh, next to the Woolworths, which is really cool, and around the corner from the the Hermitage Hotel. So right up there, historic downtown Nashville. Really hope you get to open soon, and um, Kenneth and I will be, come out there, and we'll do, we'll do a live recording, and we'll just cause all kinds of trouble. Sounds good to me. And we'll just yeah. say, we were yeah. promised, we were promised barrel-aged Red Eye Rye. And we'll you just be... It, man. You got a bottle with your name on it. We'll be demanding... <laughs> you can find everything about uh, Red Eye Rye Whiskey and the new products and the exciting new tasting room opening in downtown Nashville on Instagram at Standard Proof. That is at Standard Proof. And then you can find them online, standardproofwhiskey.com. And Robert, I hope you'll be working on that Mezcal Old Fashioned too. I will. For sure. <laughs> I need it. It probably needs some work after a decade almost so the grapefruit peel is the secret i didn't even remember that so that's exciting well thanks again robert and we will be talking to you soon man yeah thanks man all right thanks to robert longhurst from red eye rye and standard proof whiskey really cool hearing about the special not only the new stuff that he's got but the special things that he'll have at the tasting room when they open back up or get to open up for the first time very soon as promised, we are the phone lines are busy tonight. We got our man Kenneth Deadman on the line. How are you, Kenneth? Doing good, Mike. What's up with you? Sitting around here in the home studio. Good to hear Robert's doing well, man. Robert's doing well. He's Pretty excited. New stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we did talk about his Mezcal old fashioned as well, so that's exciting. Got a recipe for that. I talked a little bit at the top of the show, teasing our future episode of Shots, the Kamikaze, oh, yeah. the original shot. One shot. A very um, interesting time to talk about fatalism and to be fatalistic with what we're drinking. I look forward to that. The time now has come for... <laughs> Booze News with Kenneth Deadman, Summer 2020 Edition. Yes. It's getting better, but it will get worse first. Yes, it's going to get worse. <laughs> but uh, that doesn't include your thirst, I guess. <laughs> Mike, if you're going to be drinking during the day, I, I think we, we can all plan on plan on drinking during the day for the foreseeable future. Nika, 
sneak a Japanese whiskey to quell the Japanese whiskey shortage is putting out a briefly aged triple malt whiskey called Nika Days, intended to be drinking during the daytime in a highball. Kaboom. It's light. Oh, it's cool. Beautiful. Unpeated, of course, which is freaking fantastic, and it's perfect. I mean, that's perfect. Soda water of your choice and Japanese whiskey in the sunshine with a lot of ice. Sounds great. Drink it twice. That's the whiskey that I'm pumped on. Uh, God knows when I'll see it. I have to start calling around tomorrow. It'll take a week to find a place. But uh, in other whiskey news, Diageo has just announced uh, Johnny Walker will be bottled in a 100% plastic-free bottle next year in 2021. This is on the heels of Diageo launching the brand Pulpex, which is their uh, environmentally conscious technological packaging brand um, in partnership with a company called Pilot Light, which is a food futures brand. Now, they have... This sounds like a James Bond movie. Well, it's very interesting that it that it that they would use Johnny Walker because that is that is a huge international brand. Sure. And they have secured non-competitive brands to buy into their full packs brand, which is pretty amazing because they've got uh, Pepsi PepsiCo on the list along with uh, Unilever, which is a uh, health and well-being brand. Uh, these are these are giants. That, uh, Unilever brings you like Dove and Axe and Vaseline, and then of course Pepsi. They've got their fingers in everything. Diageo has made the biggest fucking move that they've ever made. Kind of just securing all of these uh, these packaging agreements under the guise of meeting United Nations uh, international environmental initiatives which is fantastic for, for them, fantastic for all these other companies who are otherwise just demolishing the fuck out of our planet. But there is good news in all of this because there's always a, a small guy who uh, has a little bit more of an innovative idea. Frugal Pack is a UK-based uh, pack, packaging manufacturer who has basically made their fortune on recyclable coffee cups. Some major major brands. Uh, I think that they did Dutch Brothers for a little while, which was a pretty huge coffee chain. Not as big as uh, Starbucks, but pretty fucking huge, at least in the United States. A frugal pack is uh, marketing uh, bottle machines for the wine and spirits. Eventually, likely, the restaurant industry, those that do survive in the end. Now, the frugal bottle is uh, made of 94% recycled uh, paper with a plastic liner, five times lighter than a glass bottle. It's estimated to have six times less of a carbon footprint as a glass bottle, three times less than recycled plastic. But the kicker, as I was saying, is that they manufacture the machines for further carbon emission um, cuts. Like, you have the machine in-house, and you get basically your paper your paper products from your local uh, paper distributor or paper mill. So instead of uh, Diageo's uh, Pulpex company developing a machine that guarantees uh, bottle distribution that is recyclable, Frugal Pack sells you the entire machine to drop on premises and right into your bottling line. Aha. Uh-huh. But they're releasing Johnny Walker in paper bottles. Is that right? Oh yeah, that was like five minutes ago. Yeah. Yeah. That's how this uh, whole thing starts. Yeah. <laughs> Johnny Walker. It's crazy. But yeah, like uh it, it is the future. Like glass is done. Um a lot of plastics are gonna be um starting to get phased out and kind of uh, recycling all of the wood pulp that we can is going to be necessary for proper forestation in the future. So this is an environmental and a futuristic move. Yeah, I guess uh, I guess the the great thing in all of this is all these guys are planning on a 
a positive future, whether it's like a big business or a, or a small business, they are all planning on some sort of future for the human race. I was trying to fucking find something positive for booze news this week. Like the first thing that I found was some some fucker in Florida. The Florida Files. Yeah, Fort Myers. Um, it was like the hero of the week. Uh, walked into the Walmart with a mask on. Cause that's the only description they have of him, other than like some video footage. Looks like he's the only person in the Walmart with a mask on. Loaded up on booze and covered him with a bunch of blankets. Walked out to the parking lot and rolled. Oh wow! So he just walked in, grabbed a bunch of booze, and left. Yeah, we used to call that the Easy Stevie. Um, <laughs> there's this dude, uh, Steve Sakamoto. He walked into this Walmart down on Nolensville Road and uh, loaded up a computer and uh, a bunch of dickies and rolled them straight out to the parking lot and then drove straight to my house to brag to me about it. And I'm like, you, what the fuck are you doing, dude? He's like, easy, easy. So that's why we always called it the Easy Stevie. So he got a computer and uh, Dickies. A shitload of Dickies, yeah. Like the. Uh, Beware of all enterprises that require new clothes. So he was kind of shopping for a job. It sounded like he like I got my he got some Dickies khakis and a new computer, and he's ready to go to work. That would be a good defense. That's admirable. This other guy's just stealing a bunch of booze out of a uh, Walmart in Florida. It's hard to tell if he's a hero or goat. Or idiot. <laughs> Crazy times. What else you got for booze news for us? That's it, Mike. Um, the summer whiskey edition. Yeah, I think. Uh, I don't think. Uh, I don't think the tequila tastes right. This. I think it's the. It's like Christmas in July. I feel like uh, it's the lack of uh, celebration. The tequila is just not tasting as good this year as it did last year. It's just more alone time. It means more whiskey, I suppose. Plenty of alone time, Mike. <laughs> Too much, in fact. Yeah, it's tough, man. But we got a lot to look forward to. I got the uh, home studio under construction. It's about all I got, Mike. You eating anywhere lately? I've had some dope food. Castrillo's Pizza of Inglewood. They've been going oh, strong. Yeah. yeah, their flat crust pizza, thin crust, whatever it is, um, is amazing. So I'm a big fan of them. Um, they still they still doing that strong bully. It is a strong bully. Strong bully. <laughs> uh, um, but you had some Indian food recently. Oh uh, yeah, I had that uh, six one five chutney from uh, Woodland Street right there. The old and rumors I, building. Yes, yes. I recommend picking it up and eating it right out front. Lentil vegetable. And some uh, super dope eggplant. And Sounds healthy. Fried, and they had some fr uh, fish sticks, too, that were insane. Oh, wow. And yesterday, Mike, yesterday, though, I had uh, Bang Bang Hibachi from up there uh, past uh, Old Due West on uh, yeah on Dickerson. On Dickerson, yeah. Yeah, it's banging, dude. I had sushi and uh, hibachi. And That's a cool spot. That's a little known spot out there. Dude, it's out of control and it's cheap as fuck. I used to go and get dirt nice. up there all the time for the garden. There's a good dirt spot up there. Southern nurseries. That's what I was telling them. Yeah. Great <laughs> dirt spot. <laughs> good soil up there. That's amazing. Dude, that place is great. And like like I said, it's so fast. And for what you get, it's freaking killer. Shout out uh, Hibachi on Dickerson Road in Madison, out near Due West. I believe it is north of Due West. Yeah, it's north of Due West. Old Due West. Old Due West on Dickerson. Bathroom. Yeah, just just go outside. Just go outside and deal with it. Grab a magnolia leaf. Do it like our our ancestors did it, or something like that. Um, so one to go. Uh, situation that we didn't talk about yet, but you had it recently and enjoyed it, and I've had it during the quarantine and really, really enjoyed it, was Bobo. Yes, Bobo. Oh, fuck you. Yeah. Best chicken wings. I really miss drinking Best at that bar. Tornado chicken wings in the city. Yeah, the chicken wings are amazing. Um, I believe you can get the height beer to go. 
You can get some cocktails, the sochu. I enjoyed that. That was like my neighborhood bar, and uh, the beer was cold, the company good, and the food excellent. Yeah, really cold Kieran on a hot summer day is um, it's a beautiful thing, Mike. Yeah. Especially, like, especially if you've been like watching, you've been mowing or watching someone mow. The mowing beer, we should probably do a whole episode about it, but the mowing beer the, or the post mowing beer, that's one of the it's only, thing. well, it's one of the only things we got during this whole thing. The summer that makes no sense. That's, that's one of the only drinks that's, that's there for us right now. Well, you know, you're sitting there all week and you're waiting for the grass to grow. That is how it's been. Yeah. And you don't want to be that person that's out there too early. Nah. I know those people, and they creep me out. They're really creepy. Yeah, and you're like, I'm yeah, just trying to get it done before the heat, and it's like, no, that's not okay. You don't have, you don't mow before everyone else has coffee. That's not nice. What are you gonna have your mowing beer at like nine thirty in the morning? Nah, that just doesn't work. All right, man. Well, uh, <laughs> thank you as always. Thank you, Mike. For the news, Boozington. And the news we can booze, too. Yeah, look forward to getting you back here soon, Kenneth, for the Kamikaze episode of Shots. It's the summer yeah. shots. We're going to be going back to a lot of the original shots and a lot of the original just weird, bizarre drinks that stood the test of time somehow. And the Kamikaze is something that, uh, that we could talk about. It is a, one of those three ingredient drinks similar to Old Fashioned Manhattan Negroni that we talk about on the show, but is never put up in that upper echelon like those other drinks. So it's like the three ingredient cocktail that you just don't hear much about unless you are at a bar that shouldn't be open shooting kamikaze shooters. So look forward to getting into that. We've got uh, Agave Month coming up in August. So hopefully we can find some cheer and some uh, positive energy to talk all about what we love about agave. Maybe cider in September? Plenty of cider to talk about? We're overloaded with cider. Cider talk. Cider talk. It's got to come. Looking ahead to the beginning of fall 2020, who knows the darkness that awaits. But... We are going to get into, we're going to spill our secrets, and that is what we're all leading up to for the for the fall season here. It is spill our secrets before it's all over. We're going to just go down in a blaze of glory, giving all the secrets that we can about all that we know about making drinks and crafting them. So plenty to look forward to, to here on Liquid Gold. Find us on Instagram at liquidgold underscore pod and email us liquidgoldpod at gmail.com. Shout out to Michael Eads, our producer from weownthistown.net and Jess Matchin, the Liquid Gold artists in residence doing all the lovely artwork and Garden Teened artwork and all those things. Shout out to T-Rex Music for the vibey tunes that you're hearing right now. And we look forward to seeing you. My name's Mike Wolf. I'm Kenneth Dedman. And we will see you next time on Liquid Gold.